All right, welcome back everybody with Waves and Sounds. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about two different types of uh, waves, longitudinal waves and transverse waves. So transverse waves are kind of like what we've been talking about where it's cycling through, kind of going back and forth and back and forth. Um, longitudinal waves is there's a bunch of like compressions. So you can see it's like sound to the source and then there's the part where it compresses and decompresses and compresses and decompresses and compresses and so on and so forth. That's how the wave goes. You could think of it like a slinky gun going back and forth. Okay, so two, two kind of waves. So transverse wave, in a transverse wave, the particles of the medium move perpendicularly to the direction of the wave is traveling. Okay, so what happens is the wave is kind of going up and down, up and down, but it's moving to the right and left. Okay, so the movement is perpendicular to the direction of the, the wave traveling. The Think of the motion as up and down while the wave moves forward. Examples of transverse waves, waves on a string. When you shake a rope or a string, the wave travels along the rope, but the rope moves up and down. Water waves, the surface of the water moves up and down, but the wave moves forward across the water. Longitudinal waves, which we haven't really done too many problems with so far. In a longitudinal wave, the particles of the medium move parallel to the direction of the wave. Think of a motion as back and forth, in the same direction as the wave. Sound waves travel through the air as particles vibrate back and forth along the direction of the side waves. Okay, it's through like compression and decompressing. Compression waves in a spring. If you push and pull one end of a slinky, compressions and ref uh, rare refractions travel along the slinky's length. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, here's some like demos that I highly suggest watching of what a transverse and a longitudinal wave looks like. Okay, wave velocity. So we should have learned about velocity already. Velocity is like, you know, displacement. Simply put something, how, how long something travels divided by how long it takes. So wave velocity is the velocity uh, the velocity at which the crest of the wave or any part of the wave moves okay so we're looking at like the wavelength here divided by how long it takes to make that cycle divided by the period or wavelength times the frequency depends how you want to look at it okay here's the main formulas velocity is equal to the wavelength divided by period and then you can manipulate it this way or we have velocity is equal to the wavelength times the frequency and you can manipulate it this way. Okay. All right, uh, let's move on. A sound wave has a length, a wavelength of 1.5 meters and a frequency of 200 hertz. What is the speed? So we can know that the velocity of this sound wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So let's plug some things in. Wavelength 1.5 meters, frequency 200. So this is gonna be equal to 300 meters per second. Okay, fairly simple, um, changing a little bit how we're thinking about each variable, but fairly simple. A wave travels at a speed of 340 meters per second and has a wavelength of two meters. What is the period of the wave? As always, try to pause and figure it out on your own before you just see me do it. But here we go, we know velocity is equal to the wavelength divided by the period. And this time we're looking for period. So we're gonna manipulate this a little bit. Period is equal to wavelength divided by velocity. And we have 2 divided by 340. So we have the period is equal to 2 divided by 340. Uh, ooh, it's a very small number. 0 0.006 seconds. Okay. Moving on. Uh, a wave has a wavelength of 2.5 meters and a period of 0 0.5 seconds. What is the speed of the wave? What is the frequency of the wave? Okay, so we know velocity is equal to the wavelength divided by period, 2.5 divided by period, 0.5. So this is gonna give us five meters per second. That is the speed of the wave. What is the frequency? A few ways we can do this. Uh, I'm just gonna do frequency is equal to one over period. I'm gonna do one divided by 0.5. So this is gonna give me that it is two hertz. Okay. 
Hope that all made sense. Hopefully you're pausing and trying to solve it on your own before just seeing what I do. But uh, here we go, moving on. A wave travels at a speed of 300 meters per second and has a period of 0 0.01 seconds. What is the wavelength of the wave? Okay, so velocity is equal to wavelength divided by period. And this time we're looking for wavelength. So wavelength is equal to velocity times the period. So this is 300 times the period 0.01. Oh, whoops, sorry. So this is going to be equal to 3 meters. Okay. Okay, it's starting to get a little bit more complicated, but hopefully it should be fine. Some prior knowledge here. What is the wave speed if the period of the wave is 0 0.5 seconds and the wavelength is 1.8 meters? Okay. No, pretty simple still. Um, what is the wave speed? Well, velocity is equal to wavelength divided by period, 1.8 divided by 0.5. So this will be equal to 3.6 meters per second. Okay. All right, let's do some conceptual questions. If the frequency of a wave increases while the wavelength stays the same, what happens to the velocity of the wave? What happens to the wave velocity? So velocity of the wave is equal to wavelength times frequency. So if this frequency goes up and this wavelength stays the same, that means the speed velocity, this wave velocity has to also go up. Okay, so it increases. Moving on, an object oscillates with a period of three seconds um oh sorry okay yeah three seconds the motion of the graph is shown to the right what uh what is the wavelength so wavelength remember is how long it takes to how far it is for a full cycle so we could do that or we could go from here to here Okay, so one, two, three, four. So it looks like four meters is the wavelength. What is the velocity of the wave? Velocity is equal to wavelength divided by period, which is given to us. So we have four divided by three, which is gonna be equal to 1.33 meters per second. Okay, uh, moving on. If the velocity of a wave increases while its wavelength remains constant, what happens to the period of the wave? Okay, again, when we do problems like this, we want to look at the formula. We don't want to really solve it through our intuition or how, what we think about it. So we're going to think, look at the a formula. Velocity is equal to wavelength divided by period. And we know this is staying the same, but velocity is increasing. So we know if this goes up, what does that mean that the denominator, what has to happen to the denominator? And that has to go down. Because when the denominator goes down, this goes up. Okay, so what happens to the period? It goes down. Uh, all right. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about superposition, when waves are going on top of each other, into each other, how that's all going to work when they start to combine. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.